Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome as always if this is the first time you're joining us here. I'm Jen, also known as Blessed Yoga and today as requested I'm going to be making you a forearm stand tutorial. So pinch a myurasana forearm stand and it's going to be for complete beginners. So don't worry if you've never ever done a forearm stand or you have tried and you just can't get it. I'm going to be giving you all my best tips and tricks to get into one. So if you can, it would be great if you had a block and a strap for today's video and place yourself somewhere close to a wall because we're going to be using it. Um, if you don't have a strap, feel free to grab like a towel or a tie, anything that's long like a strap. And if you don't have a block, you can always replace it for a book. So whenever you're ready and you've got your bit, we'll hop on our mats and get started. Okay, so I recommend that before you do this tutorial that you warm up for at least like 10 or 15 minutes. You can always do one of my other YouTube classes just to get a little bit more warm. And then I'm going to teach you just two warm-up poses to get into pincher that have really helped me to open up my chest and open up my shoulders in order to be able to hold my elbows directly underneath my shoulders because this is one of the key parts of being able to do a strong straight forearm stand. So the first pose we're going to do, you've probably done a hundred times before, is puppy pose. So if you come over onto hands and knees, tabletop, and then start to walk your hands forwards away from you, letting your chest reach down towards the ground, and either looking forward so that your chin touches the floor, or you can have your head down to the ground. But just thinking about every time you breathe out, trying to soften your chest down towards the ground really opening up through that chest space. And this is a really easy one you can do like every day if you can, just to open up your chest. Especially because we spend so much time on our phones and our laptops, we get really hunched over, so just reversing that desk phone body is really helpful. And then slowly walking hands back towards you, giving your shoulders a little shake, a little rock, and then on to the next one. So the next one we're gonna do is with a strap or a towel or a tie. And what you're gonna do is hold your strap in between your thumb and first finger and squeeze the strap with those fingers and then wrap the other fingers around. And you wanna really pull the strap away from each other. Now you might have to adjust the width depending on the next part, but you'll just see. So as you inhale, come up overhead, keeping shoulders down your back. And as you exhale, you're gonna pull that strap up and over your back. Now, if you're getting stuck at the top up here, it's probably because your strap is too close together. Like this is really impossible for me to move my arms back. So just being kind to yourself, taking your strap as wide as you need. Another thing with this is you don't want to puff your chest out as you come up and back. You want to keep your shoulders pressing out, your core engaged, and not letting your chest flare up like so. So you inhale, take the strap up and over, and as you exhale, take it around and back. Inhale, up and over. Exhale, bringing it down. Good, inhale, up and over. As you breathe in, it comes up. 
exhale to bring it down. I'll do one more with you, and then if you want to do a couple more on your own, that would be great, because we're really just opening up into that chest space. And good, coming all the way back down. Release the strap, put it out to the side. We're gonna use it again in a second. And just shake out your arms. Okay, so now coming into more of the strengthy base stuff that's gonna really help you build your shoulders to be strong enough to hold up your forearms down. So we're gonna come into our dolphin pose, which is, of course, a prerequisite for our pincher. Take our forearms down to the ground, tuck our toes under, lift our hips up and back. Now here you really want to press your chest back towards your thighs. Your knees can be bent if they need to be. Make sure, sure your elbows are wrapping in towards each other so you're not letting them flare out like this to the sides. So keeping elbows wrapped in towards each other, pressing your chest back. And see if you can just hold here for five breaths. I won't do it with you, but these are just poses that are going to help you to build that strength for your forearm stand. So when you've done your five breaths, just coming down and giving the shoulders a little shake. Now the next exercise we're going to do is almost like a dolphin dip. I'm sure there's definitely a more proper term for this, but I call them dolphin dips. So you come into your dolphin, tuck toes under, lift your hips high, press, oops, press your chest back, bend knees if you need to, and then as you breathe in, you're going to start to lower your nose down between your thumbs as low as you can, and then push back. Exhale, lower and push back. We'll do three more together. Lower in and press back. Last two, lower, lower and press back. Oh, they're hard. One more. Lower in and press back. Really nice. Dropping your knees bump back towards your heels. Now, all these things that I'm teaching you, you can do once a day or double them up, so do a few rounds of each to really, really build up that strength and flexibility in the shoulders and the chest. Next one we're going to do is our dolphin, but we're going to lift one leg at a time. So down to your dolphin, tuck toes, lift your knees. As you breathe in, lift your right leg up to the sky. Keep pressing your chest back. And you really want to lift it as high as you possibly can. Now try and hold here for five breaths, pressing your chest back. And when you've done your five breaths, oh, take your right toes down. If you need to take a break in between, take a little break and then straight to the other side. Left toes lift up to the sky and like so, you hold for five breaths. Really nice, taking the left toes down, knees down, and give yourself a shake. The next one we're gonna do is gonna be using the wall. So I want you to come up against the wall, feet to the wall. This is how you measure how far you need to be away from it. Almost draw a little line with your finger, like a mental note, where your bum is. Keep your finger on it, and then turn around. Now this is what, where you want your elbows to be. So drop an elbow down by your finger and then drop the other elbow in line. You want your shoulders and your arms to be shoulder width apart. So you're gonna grab opposite elbows and make sure that you can fully reach around the edges of the elbows. Once you've done this, hands come out in front. I like to keep my hands flat to the floor it gives me more grip. And then you're gonna lift your hips and slowly start to walk your feet up the wall. Now be careful here because there's a chance if your wall's slippy, you're gonna fall and hit your knees. So maybe just taking a pillow underneath your knees 
Trust me, I've done it plenty of times before. Walking feet up the wall, up the wall. And then this is where our flexibility comes into play. So if you can see, when I'm here, there's too much weight being loaded over the shoulders. When I push back and I can push my chest through, it's easier to hold because the shoulders are stacked over the elbows. And we're going to try and hold here for five breaths. If you get tired, you can bend your knees a little or coming down and hopping back up again. Slowly on the way down, take your feet down, knees down. Hopefully the pillow caught you as you fell and just taking a child's pose. So the next progression for forearm sound is to do the same thing. So measure it out, take your elbows down to the floor, hands out in front, take your feet back to the wall, walk them up slowly, carefully, really make sure your feet aren't slipping, don't do this in socks. And then from here, you're gonna lift one leg away. Squeeze your bum, lift, lift, lift. And then we hold for five breaths on one side, come down, give yourself a rest, and then go straight back up for the other side. So just making sure you give yourself enough rest in between, otherwise the shoulders are gonna burn out and you're more likely to hurt yourself. So just be kind to the situation and to your body. Okay, so I've got two more tips for you before we start to try and float maybe away from the wall. And the first one requires our strap. So what you want to do is make a loop in your strap, take it up your arms, all mine's all twisted, and you want your strap to be shoulder width apart. So I shouldn't be able to pull my arms further than that shoulder width apart length. Yeah? You want it to be pretty tight. Not too close, just shoulder width. Then we're going to take our forearms down back to that spot on our mat, that correct spot where we could be in an L shape. And what this does is it helps us to keep our shoulders wrapped in towards each other. Because what you might find is that your elbows are flaring out away from each other because you don't have that strength in your shoulders to wrap them together. And I know it's a little bit of a cheat, but with me it really helped me to actually build that strength to then not have to use the strap. So taking elbows down, we're going to tuck our toes under, walk up the wall and lift up. Remember pressing your chest back. I know your head might hit your strap like mine is right now. <laughs> Pressing back. And just seeing if that helps to keep elbows wrapping in. Last tip, you can actually keep your strap on your arms, is to use a block. So what this block does is by having it between our hands and squeezing it, between our hands, it automatically turns on the muscles in our shoulders to help us to stay lifted, to help us into our pincher. So, elbows down, grab your block, squeeze your block, and then again, walk your toes up, be careful, press your chest back towards the wall and keep squeezing your block. One more breath. And then slowly walking down the wall. We're like Spider Man today. <laughs> Unstrap yourself and give your shoulders a good shake. Okay, so we've now come to the last part of our tutorial where we're going to actually try and flow our feet away from the wall. So the first way I will show you is how we've been doing it this whole time, facing away from the wall. So take your forearms down to the floor, make sure that your elbows are shoulder width apart, hands down, 
and make sure you keep doing that wrapping in movement, elbows squeezing towards each other. So it almost makes this chesty part tense. So you can feel it when it's relaxed and squidgy and then wrap in and feel that it's gone a little bit more tense and naturally the shoulders should do the same. So, elbows down. I would advise you not to do this with your strap and block because if you do fall over, the block or the strap could hit you in the face and we really don't want that. So yeah, I would try and not do this part with the block and strap. The other way, we can do it. So, tuck toes, lift knees, same thing, we walk up the wall, chest reaches back. Now the difference is here, I want you to look forwards between your thumbs and then lift one of your legs away from the wall like we did before. And then you're going to really try and reach the right toes or whatever toes are lifted away from the wall and do little tiny taps. Maybe you hold it for a bit, maybe you don't, but we just try. Maybe you're also as red in the face as me right now, but that is one way you can do it. I actually didn't learn that way. I learned the way I'm going to show you now. So I learned facing the wall. I actually used my strap a lot when I was learning to do a pincher, forearm stand. So I did that same thing. I strapped up, I can't make this. <laughs> there we go. I strapped up my arms. I held my block in my hand and I went to the wall. Make sure you're not too close to the wall, otherwise it can be a bit dangerous to hit your head against it. And then I tuck my toes, lift my knees, look forwards to the block that I'm holding and do a big kick up and try and find the wall. Now once you find the wall, I want you to think about pressing your chest back towards your strap. You're going to bend one knee in towards your chest and try to float the other toes away. Keep floating one of the toes away. If this is too hard, bend this knee and try and float. Float. And then come down. Oh, forearm stands are tiring. <laughs> but it's just playing with your feet up in the air. It's much harder if both legs are straight because then you're going to end up in more of like a banana shape and it's very hard to come out the banana once you're in it. I'll show you what I mean. So if you're in your banana shape up in the air, like so, you've kicked up and your feet have hit the wall and you're like this, dumping into your back, it can feel really, really hard to get out of it. I can't even get out of it. It's very difficult. <laughs> so what I advise always, as I just showed you, I'll show you one more time, is to lift up, kick up against the wall, squeeze your block, elbows wrapped in, big kick up, look forward, pike one knee in towards your chest, keep pressing your elbows down into the floor, then this leg can stay bent or straight, you decide and you're going to try and float it away from the wall, like so. <laughs> and that is how we do our forearm stand. Now I know it's quite difficult and you have to be very, very patient with yourself. But honestly, keep at it, keep trying. And when you feel comfortable, the best way to try and learn to get into a picture away from the wall And that, my friends, is our pincher tutorial. I really hope that it helped you in some ways 
give you some tips and tricks to get into your pincher. It's a very, very hard one for on the stand. Requires a lot of strength in the body, in the shoulders, arms, core, everything. And if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and yoga videos. And if you feel like this one didn't really help because maybe it was a bit too easy for you, then please let me know and I'll make sure to make a more inter intermediate version so you can learn to take your pincher away from the wall. I'll see you back here soon. Mwah.